Right, out on another little adventure in the good old Peak District. It's the evening, the sun is starting to set. I've just come up half to work, a bit of a rush getting here. Uh, forgot loads of stuff, <laughs> forgot my food, left it in the fridge in the freezer so I had to stop at Tesco and get more stuff. I'm out for uh, two nights and uh, doing some quite long walks, about 15 miles each day, uh, apart from tonight obviously. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my uh, rucksack is, oh, I weighed it and it was like 17 kilo, I think just under 17 kilo. So bloody heavy but it'll, uh, it'll lighten up after tonight a bit because I have got quite a bit of food with me, quite a bit of water, I uh, bought a bit too much really but uh, I wanted to have a bit of a luxury camp um, and I also really wanted to see how the Durston Kakwa handled heavier loads um, so that is something I will be reporting on this journey. I might also do a review video, which I will link to separately. Oh, lovely. <laughs> it's busy, busy, busy up here tonight. Um, I've just uh, passed a couple while camping just just down there. Really nice couple. I've chat for about 15 minutes or so, which I haven't really got time for. But uh, they're really nice, and yeah, it's nice to have a chat with them. This is their first time up on Derwent Edge. Um, so if you are watching this video, um, it, was, it was great to meet you. But uh, yeah, they said there's quite a few people kind of heading up this way uh, as a few groups so hmm I might struggle with a pitch here this could be very interesting right <laughs> strike two so uh, yeah just uh, come across another lad and he's kind of he's kind of buried in the heather um, uh, and he said yeah he said there's a couple that have gone over to the coaching horses so Unfortunately, I know that has gone. What a gorgeous evening, eh? What a gorgeous evening. It is, uh, I guess it must be gone eight o'clock now. And uh, shorts are out. Well, legs are out. Shorts are on, legs are out. And it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's beautiful. Right. So, in the usual location, um, the uh, spots on either side of here uh, are taken, um, but that's fine. I fully expected this spot to not be here, so I think I've been quite lucky. Um, I'm going to keep my voice down because there's a chap over here, and then there's uh, um, a gentleman with his two daughters on the other side. I um, wish I could get my daughter to come out while camping, but hey -ho. Anyway, it's getting dark, so I'm not really going to film. I'm going to get my tent pitched. Uh, and then I'm going to get cooking because uh, I need to eat because I am starving. Right, I can't film for long because <coughs> the midges are absolutely rife tonight. So, to quickly show you, I've got some ragu uh, beef burgers, which is quite nice. Look at this burger sauce in the fire pit. Slap that on. Uh, I've got the BRS stove with me and uh, a lovely ultra phase. Um, I'm actually using this uh, midge repellent as well. Um, sorry, you can't really see it. Um, so I'm seeing how that's going. And I have to say, they seem there's not quite so many midges about um, now. Um, 
I've lathered myself in um, smidge um, and put that on and they've seen, they seem to have yeah, dissipated a bit so maybe it does work, maybe it's the repellent I've got on, I'm not entirely sure but they're a little bit more comfortable outside now but that's the case. Um, anyway, I'm going to put the red light back on so I don't attract any more of the Mitchies. Right, I'm in the sanctuary of my tent. Um, <laughs> yeah, those midges were rife. Though I do, th I do think that that repellent seemed to work. Um, hard to tell whether it was that or the fact that I put a uh, smidge on. But um, I'll give it another go tomorrow and see. I don't know whether you can hear. But outside the tent, they're all trying to get in. All of them. All the midges. Anyway, so this is dinner for this evening. I've taken a big chunk out of that one. These are my Wagyu burgers with some of that burger sauce on top. And they're pretty pretty delicious, which is nice. I've left my beer outside. I'm going to have to brave it. Uh, anyway, I'm going to crack on and eat these before they get cold. I've got ice buns with Wagyu sauce on it now. <laughs> I've just dropped it on the burger. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got ice buttons for dessert, so uh, look forward to those as well. Right. Uh, see if I can reach out and grab my beer without my hand getting bitten off. Good morning. So I didn't really film a lot last night because it was it was too dark. Um, by the time I'd kind of got everything um, pitched up, and I was cooking in the dark, and uh, as you saw, um, and then uh, yeah, I went to bed pretty pretty quickly. Um, and it was pretty difficult going outside because there's so many midges about, and, and I've been bitting all over my legs and my arms um, so yeah I started to kind of stay in the tent rather than going out and looking around plus because there is quite a few people scattered around scattered around me I uh, thought yeah it was best to just, just uh, have an early night I didn't sleep too bad but I uh, the, the main culprit really in terms of sleeping is I think I've, I've started to dial in my, my sleep system now so I've got um, an enlightened equipment uh, quilt now. Uh, this is the second time I've been out in it, um, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, it gives me a lot more freedom to move about. Uh, enjoying the B Agnes Zoom UL. Um, obviously, I haven't taken it down to any cold temperatures yet, but in terms of comfort, it's it's superb. Um, so those two have been really good so far. Um, I'm still struggling really with, with pillows, so I've been using this um, uh, granite gear uh, stuff sack and using that as a, as a, as a pillow. You can it's got this quilted side here which you could use. It's still not ideal, um, and it yeah I had a bit of a sore neck in the middle of the night and yeah it wasn't really working for me. Uh, but hey ho. Uh, I'll I'll figure it out, I'm sure. Right, I'm going to get up. It looks like I might be getting some kind of sunrise. So let's get up and let's have a look. I 
there's people up already there's a couple of lads up on the rocks taking pictures and all sorts this is the busiest I've uh, I've been out in I think uh, camping um, like the maximum I've had here really on zone edge is two people but yeah there's two tents around the side there's another guy around there uh, yeah it's gonna be a busy weekend I think As you can see, we've got another tent here, and then there's two tents around the other side. Yeah, busy, busy. So it's only 7.44 and uh, it's already really warm. Um, probably, it's fair, my watch is 19 degrees but it feels warmer than that. That sun's really hot. Crazy considering it's the 9th of September. I think this feels like it's the hottest we've had it all summer. So I bought this elixir to, um, cup slash pot. So I was fed up with drinking out those silicon mugs, just didn't really enjoy drinking out of them. Coffee went cold really quick um, and really, yeah, definitely the right choice. Really enjoying it. It's lightweight, it's cheap and uh, it fits inside my, um, fits inside my um, Lixida, uh main pot as well, which is nice. Just a nice little feature. It's got a little, little divot here which you can put your fingers into to grab it nicer. Just a small little thing but it makes it nicer to hold. It's the little things in life isn't it? Right, I'm going to uh, start getting packed up. I won't film me packing my stuff up. I've done that a thousand times. So I'm heading over to Bleaklow Moors today. Uh, I think it's probably about um, 10 miles Think. I'm having a look at Grinner Stones or Bleaklow Stones. I've camped out at Bleaklow Stones before. Um, camped out there with, with Twiggy. You can see the video for that up here. Bloody midges absolutely love me. <laughs> Honestly, legs are covered. Right, so, we are set off. I don't know why I keep saying we. It's just me. I've set off. I've set off from camp. And, holy crap, my bag's really heavy. Um, it is a, it, it's a great test for the, um, for the Kakwa. Um, I was speaking to uh, uh, the chap that was uh, just camped up around the corner from me, and he, um, he, 
he's heading back today. He had two litres of water spare, so he offered it to me. And I'm thinking, well, I've already got two and a half litres. Do I need another two litres? I said yes, and then I kind of instantly regretted it. But at that point, it's like, I can't really hand it back, can I? Um, so I decanted it into my um, pouch, my water pouch, filter pouch. And uh, it's, it's in the, I don't know whether you can see, it's in the, in the front of my bag. But uh, yeah, so I've got about four and a half kilos of water on me, plus three 400 mil beers. So, you know, that's another one point, whatever, kilos. Uh, so, <laughs> and obviously lighting up as the day, day goes on. Right, I've got a long, long, long way to go. I'm just going to take it really slow, no rush today at all. The weather's gorgeous, it's really busy on Derwent Edge, so I'll be heading over to uh, uh, Howden Moor soon, which will probably be a little bit quieter. So there's a bit of an event going on. Um, the Nine Peaks Challenge, I believe, so they're going along all the peaks, or well, the majority of the peaks in the Peak District, uh, which is why it is so, so busy. So I presume they're doing Howden Edge, which is where I'm going as well, so you know, we're going to be seeing a lot of people. Apparently there's a stampede of runners as well doing it later, it's hikers at the moment. But yeah, a lot of people around. See up there, some kind of tent, uh, which I presume is out water, I guess. I definitely don't need any more of that. <laughs> so then as you can see, there's loads of people with flags and making lots of noise. Is that for they rounding up the sheep? I can see a few sheep in the distance. I have no idea. Is it a grouse thing? I'm not entirely sure. I've seen it before, but yeah, I'm not quite sure what they are doing. I'll, uh, I'll go and ask them if I pass one of them and find out what it's all about. So I've just heard uh, gunshots, which I think confirms it's not sheep. It's, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely grouse. So I guess, uh, shooting grouse today. What a grouse. Yeah, Alright, how does the grouse hunting work then? Basically, we've got all the flags, the guns will all be lined out. Right. And we drive all the grouse with flags to the guns. Ah, uh, okay. So the guns are over there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So they don't like the flags, is that? Is that the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. make a lot of noise. Make a lot of noise and then they just... Ah, okay. Yeah, Josh. Interesting. In theory. <laughs> Have fun. So, the way that uh, grousing works, and you can see over there all the uh, orange flags flying. So basically they, all the people were lined up along this path here, and there's some off the path as well. And so what they do, is they line up there and then they force, uh, they've all got uh, walkie talkies to communicate with each other. And then the people with the guns to shoot the grouse are over on that side. And they f the, what these flags do is they, they force the grouse over to that side because they see the, the flags. They make a lot of noise. Whether you can hear, you probably can't hear them, but they're making a bit of a noise. wooing and all sorts and yeah it forces them over there and that's um and then they shoot the grouse there you go so this is uh Howden Moors that I'm on at the moment, and it's uh, it's 
pretty bleak. It's not, not the nicest, really, of, uh, of walks. It's just pretty barren. Um, it's quite nice once you get onto Howden Edge, which is just over there. Uh, but, and that's the reason why, really, you don't see many people this way. I could probably sit here all day and see hardly anybody, if anybody at all. But you can kind of see why, can't you? Very barren. So this is uh, Howden Edge. It's nice to be out of that barren wasteland that I was on. There's a nice little breeze up here as well, which is nice. And not a soul can be seen, which is nice. Right, I'm going to have something to eat, I think. I'm starving. It's food and some water. The temperature here is absolutely perfect. There's a few clouds in the sky now, which is quite nice. So it just takes the edge off that heat. Um, yeah, I do love coming to Howden Edge. It's a slog to get here, uh, especially from Derwent Edge, but it's uh, a real great view of the valley. So we're going, we're gonna go all the way around the edge here, where you can see, we'll follow all across the edge here. Howden Edge, oh, it just goes all the way around here. And then I think, I think then we get to uh, Bleak Low Moors, which is, I think, uh, there. So I think <laughs> we'll go all the way around there, and I think Bleak Low's there. So yeah, literally, I'm on the other side of the valley to where I want to be tonight, camping. So, yeah, I'm going to have to get cracking in a minute. It's so nice here. Right. I need to put the uh, backpack back on and uh, get hiking. We've still got seven miles to go. Easy crazy. This is uh, hard going. I never seem to learn coming up onto Howden Moors how barren it is, and it's just it's just full of full of this, full of that. Oh, I've been doing it for miles and miles, and I'm knackered, and the sun. It's beating down hard. You know, don't get me wrong. It's nice to get the sun out in England every now and then, but there's midges everywhere. I'm whingy. I'm just had enough of this now. I need some other scenery. Anyway, enough of the whinging. Right, got. Four and a half miles to go until Grinnerstones. I might not find anything at Grinnerstones, so I don't really know. I've never been to Grinnerstones before, so I don't know what it's like. So I might have to carry on to Bleaklow Stones and then hope that uh, 
There's a place there for me to pitch you up. We will soon see. Oh god. I think I've got another four and a half miles of this. The problem is, it's not like there's even anywhere to nice to sit and just chill out. As soon as you do, you get eaten alive by midges. Right, so, oh, just stopped for a break. Absolutely cream crackered. Uh, my feet have had enough. I've just uh, stopped to fill up my water bottle and put a, a tablet in there sports tablet in there. So I've got about 2.9 miles to go. So get in there. I can see Grinner Stones. Let me see, just over there. So I'm not far at all now. I think I'm just walking around across that ridge line there and up to there. So yeah. Almost there. Right, another rest I think. Have a slug of water. I'll get back in. Oh. Needed that. Blooming heavy. I'm going to swear now. Holy shit. Absolutely battered. I've only got one point three seven miles to go, but I'm struggling to make it. My legs are just giving in. It's got no energy left at all. It's just. slog it's the terrain is just like this for the last two miles it's just been up and down up and down it's just been awful I mean when you've got to get up there and I think and just a little bit further but really struggling Right, let's try and make this last bit. Come on, let's do it. Hello, you there? Anyone home? Look at the state of my legs. Look at that. 